everybody is unique, everybody is beautiful, everybody has something to offer. What makes this person so unique that I would like to share that with the world? The first thing, the physical beauty, which makes that person beautiful. And the second thing is the, the unseen beauty. And the unseen beauty for me is everything. Because the physical beauty, my skill, my uh, technique can capture that. But the unseen beauty is a thing no one is seeing and is a thing that everyone has to see. The unseen beauty can easily be relate to what sometimes people say chemistry. You know there's a fire going on, you know there's electricity going on, and you cannot tell. And this comes with how we walk, how we talk, how we look, how we stand, how we... All those things put together gives a certain kind of an unseen beauty. Painting has become more difficult for me than it used to be because when I was young and didn't know that much, it has always been the physical beauty. But as I grow, I realize that the contribution a portrait does to people got more to do with how you look at a portrait and you know that it's telling you something, it's telling you to change your game, it's telling you to be thoughtful. The colors I use are very, very, very basic. Something that you might see on all palettes. The basic blues, the basic, I don't have any magical color. The beauty is in uh, how you see things rather than what you use. So spend more time learning about people than learning about your palette. Sometimes we are so busy trying to create that we don't learn about nature. How many times have you taken time off from painting? Say, you know, I'm gonna go to the park today and all what I'm gonna do today is watch people, how they walk, people and their pets and partners, and lovers and friends and family. What are they thinking? Where are they coming from? You see the, your last finger? It is not only what you have learned and know. There's something out there that has the hidden secrets of the cure we're looking for. How relaxed are you? An adoque sometimes is a little spicy. The edges are a little rougher. The message is a little elusive. Even though I got everything from the uh, classical foundation, I really don't think it's the time I want to live in or it's the time people should be even looking at. There's too many beautiful things around me now. An adequate is something that is much, much, much closer to uh, reality. Not reality by scale, but by the truth. The thing is, what do you live for? What is your purpose in life? Uh, what is the mission that you are on? Art should inspire, should change lives, should help people. If you start to call yourself an artist, and uh, you always have to remember that that is the mission you've taken on. And if this is the mission you've taken on, how much are you willing to invest your mind, your time, your being, your everything? If you, even if you're a young guy, if you're 30, if you're 25, one day, 
you'll be asked, what did you do well to help people? Not just because you have the mic to sing for million people means you have to take the easy way out. Great things does not have to be cheap. It doesn't. You have the choice of doing great stuff and still touching a lot of people. The differences between bad and good depends on the artist doing just a little homework. You have history books to tell you what has been done, what is possible. You have life to teach you what people want, what people like, and what will help people. You have your imagination to scream through the two and reason what is good for you. So whether art bounces what we already know, or what we should know, or what could better tomorrow, it only depends on the artist himself, how deep he's willing to go. And this one, yeah, this is me at uh, 15, when I was, um, this is my first job painting billboards. I painted 18 hours a day, 18 hours a day. From Ghana, I went to Nigeria. And of course, if you look back the time when Ghana economy was very, very bad, people starvation and all those kind of things. And when I was in art school, we didn't have art materials. But when I went to Nigeria, my first job was working in an advertising company and tons of materials. Even though I was working for a company, in my mind, I was painting for myself. So the joy of painting let me work so much. The inspiration in disguise. I wanted to paint still life. I ended up painting billboards. But then through billboards, I gained so much experience that uh, I was almost over experience when I came here and I have to do small little paintings. Your heroes should come from everywhere. I am a painter, but I'm inspired more. Jimi Hendrix teaches me more of what I can do with my paints than a painter can teach me. The way he evolved, the way he practiced, what he achieved, how his work touched people, it's so inspirational. It becomes like a blueprint. If you follow the manner in which people achieve things, it doesn't matter what they achieve. You can use the same theory to help you evolve. So keep your eyes open. I believe, this is, a, this is a little funny, but I believe that we live in a culture where the Renaissance artist, the greatest thing men has done, can be done better. I really believe artists have more choice. The uh, circumstances in our modern life brings itself for us to do better than it has ever been. Times like this, it means one thing. We're looking for the next hero who will show us that it could be done well.